Hi. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to find the critical path of a graph and use critical path analysis in project management. So suppose we have the following schedule. Uh, we have jobs A to H. So job A is the start. Job B is prepare dry materials. Job C, prepare wet materials. Job D, construct the central panel. Job E, construct the upper layer. Job F, construct the base. Job G, assemble. And job H, finish. With the following predecessors. So, A is not dependent since this is the start of the job. Job B and C are dependent both from A. Job B is dependent on jobs A, B, C. Job E is dependent on C, D. Job F is dependent on B, D. Job G is dependent on D, E, F. Job H is dependent on F, G. Now, each job has a duration in minutes of, uh, so for job a to F, that's 10, 5, 30, 5, 12, 15, 6, 20, respectively. So what we want is to find the critical path of uh, the job. First, we want to find the shortest possible time in order to finish the project. Find the critical path uh, or the, the critical jobs and then find the schedule of each job with the earliest start and earliest finish and latest start and latest finish of each job so that we may know which job are critical and which job has slacks. Okay, so let's start. The first thing we need to do is to convert the schedule into graph with vertices jobs A to H and the arrow signifying the dependencies or the predecessor of each job. So we start with job A at the leftmost and we should be able to finish the job at the rightmost. So that will be H. So on the leftmost, we will write A. And then on the rightmost, we will write H. In between, we need to place the jobs B, C, D, E, F, and G in a way that we can visualize the flow of the project. So the next thing that we need to plot are the vertices B and C. And of course, D, since all of them are dependent on A. So on the right of A, we write these vertices, taking in mind that uh, vertex B, C, and D are dependent all on A. So we have, uh, let's put B here, and then C here, and then D here. So I can put an arrow to signify dependencies. All right. Next is to plot vertex E. So according to the schedule, vertex E is dependent on C and D. Uh, B is also dependent on B and C. So that means I need to move D further to the right so that I can indicate the dependencies of D from B and C. So what I can do is I can move it further to the right, but since it is dependent on B and C, I'm going to move C here. And then I'm going to place D somewhere on the right of B and C. I'm doing that since I need to place an arrow from left to right coming from B to D. And then coming from C to D. So our arrow must all, always point from left to right. Because the arrow here signifies time. So we want to find the schedule from left to right. 
Now, according to our schedule, vertex E is dependent on C and D. So, E must be placed somewhere on the right between C and D. So, somewhere on the right, so let's place E here. And there should be an arrow from D to E and C to E since E is dependent from those two. Now, F is dependent from B and D. So, it must be placed on the right of both B and D. So, let's put F here. So, I'm going to add an arrow from B to F and then from D to F. Now, G, assembly, is dependent on D, E, and F. So, I'm going to place that on the right of D, E, and F. So, on this right, I have G. So, G is dependent on these three. And then finally, H is dependent both on, on F and G. So, there should be an arrow from G to H and F to H. So, basically, this will now be the graph representing the schedule of our project. Here, we can easily see the dependencies of each project. So, now for us to know the critical path, we need to determine the early start and finish and the late start, late finish of each schedule. So, how do we do that? So, we're going to add a 2 by 3 table for each vertices where we are going to write the schedule of each job. So, this will consist of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 boxes. So, let's construct those boxes. So, this will be the box for A. And then, this will be box B and C. This will, the fourth will denote D. And then, on the right of D, we have F on top. Then, E at the bottom. And then, on the right of F and E, we have G. And then, on the rightmost part, we have H. All right. So, to signify the dependencies, I'm going to write arrows A to B, A to C, and then to D. Now, D is also dependent both on B and on C. On the other hand, there's an arrow from D to F and B to F, and there's also an arrow from D to G. From D to F and from C to F. Now there's an arrow from F to G, D to G, and E to G. And finally, H are dependent from F and G. So we have an arrow from F to H and G to H. So basically, this is the same graph, only we put a 2 by 3. Uh, table so that we can write the informations. Alright. So what do we write below the vertices? So below the vertices, we will write the amount of time needed in order to finish those jobs. So for A, we have 10. For B, we have 5. For C, we have 30. For D, we have 5. So let's write them down. 10, 5, 30, 5. For E, we have 12. For F, we have 15. E is 12. F is 15. And then to finish G, that's 6 and H, 20. So this is 6. This is 20. So first, we're going to make a forward pass. So the early start of A is, of course, 0 since this is the start of the job. After 10 minutes, you can finish job A. So, you can start now B. Since C is dependent on A, you can also start C. Now, if we look at D, D is dependent not just from A. It's also dependent from B and from C. So, that means we cannot start D yet even if we are done with A. We need to wait first for B and C before we can start with D. So, B will be done after 10 plus 5, which is 15. 
and C will be done after 10 plus 30, which is 40. So once all A, B, and C are done, you can now start D. So what you're going to get is the highest value of the early finish of A, B, and C. So of these early finishes, the highest value is 40. That means D must wait until C is finished. So the earliest possible start of D is 40. So again, of these three dependencies, dependent from B, from A, and from C, you get the highest value. So let me put a note here. You get the highest. All right. Now, you can finish D by adding 5 to 40. So we have 45. Now, looking of F, it's dependent on B and D. So of the two, the higher value is 45. So the earliest start of F is 45. On the other hand, since E is dependent also on D and on C, where D is higher, so the early finish of D will be the early start of E. So this is 45. Okay. So to finish F, we have 45 plus 15, so that's 60. To finish E, we have 45 plus 12, so that's 57. Now, G is dependent on F, on D, and on E. But of the three, the highest value is from F. So the early start of G is the early finish of F. So that's 60. To finish G, requires 60 plus 6, so that's 66. So we can now input the early start of H, which is whichever is higher from F and G. So that is 66. So 66 plus 20 gives us 86. So meaning, the shortest possible time that the job will be finished is 86 minutes. Now, for us to determine the critical path, we need to do the backward pass as well. So how do we do the backward pass? Starting from 86, this time, we're going to go back in time. So if you end at 86, then for H, you should have start at 66. So what you do is you copy the early finish. Since G is the only arrow coming from H, so that means the early the late finish of g will be the the late start rather of h will be the late finish of g so you just copy 66 so 66 minus 6 gives us 60. now f has two arrow coming out. One is to H and one is to G. So what you do is you get the smaller value to get the late finish. So of the two, the smaller value is 60. So this time, if there are multiple arrows coming out, then the late finish will be the smaller value of the late start of the jobs whose arrow are coming out from F. So from H and from G, the smaller value is 60. So we're now getting the smaller value. So here at the late finish, what we are getting is the smallest value. So for the forward pass, we're getting the highest value. For the backward pass, we're getting the smallest value. Okay? Now for E, the only arrow is coming out to G. So you just simply copy the late 
uh, start of G. So that's 60. So we have 60 minus 12. So that's 48 for the late start of E. For F, we have 60 minus 15. That's 45 for the late start of F. Now looking at D, arrows are coming out from D to F, G, and E. So what you need to get is again the smallest value of the three early, rather late start. So the smallest late start is 45. So I'm going to, to copy 45 here. So of the three, 45, 60, and 48, you get the smallest value. We're now doing again the backward pass. Now, 45 minus 5 is 40. So there are two arrows coming out from C. That's towards D and towards E. The smaller is 40, so I'm going to get 40. For B, also there are two arrows coming out from B towards F and towards D. So 45 and 40, I'm going to get 40 here. So copy the smallest. Alright. Now 40 minus 5. So for B, we have 35 as the late start of B. For C, 40 minus 30, that's 10. So now, for the late finish of A, so we have three arrows coming out from A, towards B, towards D, and towards C. I'm going to get the smallest value, which is 10, and then 10 minus 10, 0. To look at the latest finish and early finish. So again, this is the early start, early finish. This is late start, late finish. So whichever boxes has the same value for early finish and late finish, those will be a critical job. So this is a critical job. This is again, C is a critical job. D is a critical job. F is a critical job. G is a critical job. And of course, H is a critical job. So that means our critical path is A to C to D to F to G and to H. This means that none of this uh, job on this critical path can be delayed in order to achieve the shortest possible time to complete at 86 minutes. Alright. So, the criteria again to find the critical path is to find the box with the same early finish and late finish. So, what's the shortest completion time? So, that's 86 minutes. If you want, you can summarize the job as follow. So, job A, the early start and early finish of job A is 0 and 10 respectively. So, you just have to get the value early start and early finish. So, for A, that's 0, 10. For B, that's 10, 15 to check. This is B, so 10, 15. So, early start is 10, early finish is 15. For C, it's 10.40. For D, is 40.45. So again, you can check from the graph. From G, it's 60.66. From H, it's 66.86. You can also copy the latest start and finish. So what does the latest start and finish mean? This is the latest time in your schedule that you can start the job. And when you start the job late, this is the latest finish that you need to finish the job. Now, from here, you can see that when the early start and early finish and the late start and late finish values are the same, then those are critical. So in our table, these are critical. 1040 and 1040, so that's critical as well. Right. 40 and 45, so this is critical as well, since they have the same value. 45 and 57, 48 and 60, so not the same. 
4560, so this is critical, critical, critical. So those are the critical jobs. So that means if you delay any of the jobs in the critical path, your completion time will be delayed as well. So the only jobs that has a slacks are job B. So you have a 35 minute slack, meaning anywhere between 10 to 35, you can start your job. So you have a 25 minute slack and job E. So you can start anywhere between 45 to 48. So you have a slack of three minutes. So this is how you find the critical jobs and the slacks in a project management.